of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as the story. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So they're glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> you ask me in your last letter, how's my antique business gone? Mamma mia, my business is not the gone, it's a gone. <laughs> In America, they got a saying, when a business ain't so good, it's out of stand still. Mamma mia, my business ain't standing still, it's a gone backwards. <laughs> and I'm a tried this so hard to be good American business man. I'm even joined the Better Business Bureau. But a sp- still, the business is to get to know better. If you want to know the truth, to Mamma Mia, how much money I'm a got after one year in America? In the last, last 12 months, after I paid off all of my expense, I found I'm a got a profit of I'm a over $50. <laughs> this $50 is for a Betsy Ross bed, which I'm a bought from a New England farm, and which is now standing in my window. Not to the farm or the bed. <laughs> Mamma mia, if I'm a could only get some idea how to sell it at the bed. Oh, excuse me, is a customer coming in? How do you do, sir? I'm from the Clary Cash Register Company. Oh, well, I come right in, Mr. Clary. My name is not Clary. Oh, your name is a cash register? <laughs> no, no. Clary is the name of the register, and I represent the company. Sir, are you satisfied with that beaten up old cash register you've got? No. And why not? Well, a fellow who's an event of my cash register, he's a forgot the how to invent a cash for the inner side. <laughs> oh, not doing much business, eh? No, tell her the truth. Uh, my old cash register is open only twice this week. Uh, when a fire truck is a passerby. <laughs> but uh, this morning is open up uh, twice. It was a two alarm of fire. Which proves my point exactly. You're not doing any business because you're resisting modernization. Old-fashioned methods just don't get the business. You need a Clary cash register. It's as modern as television. You mean you press the button and how does it come, Edwin? No. (laughs) Well, wait. Wait, you give me a big idea. What? I'm going to put a television set in my store and the people that come in to watch it, they're going to buy my antiques. Excuse me, please. That's a good idea. I'm going to see my countryman of Pasquale. But what about the cash register? Well, if I'm making enough money, I'm going to buy it to Mr. Clary. Thank you very much. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, I'm a just, uh, I'm a just got a big idea how to make a lot of money. How, Luigi? Television. Television. Luigi, I got a bad news for you. Somebody has invented television before you. <laughs> no, no, Pasquale, you don't understand. I'm going to show free television in my store. People, they come in and they buy my antiques. <laughs> What's so, what's so funny, Pasquale? Anybody who watches television in your antique shop, you know what they liable to see? What? <laughs> Benjamin Franklin wrestling with a gorgeous George Washington. <laughs> well, then, 
Then you don't think it's such a good idea, huh? Oh, Luigi, all the time you get such a crazy ideas of how to bring in the customers. I remember the time you was to run that two-for-one sale. But, Pasquale, I was just arriving in the country. You should have uh... still been able to figure out you can't stay in business if you give it two dollars for what? <laughs> Look, Luigi, I'm going to advise you for your own good to forget this a television idea. Everybody knows the television is on the way out. How did the way out? Sure, then? it's unpatriotic to buy television today. If a people was to keep buying the sets, we would have wind up with a civil war. Civil war? What's going on? How you figure this out? Common sense. Everybody buys a set. He's put up a big aerial so he can catch bigger pictures. Uh-huh. This starts a competition with his neighbor who builds a bigger aerial. Uh-huh. Pretty soon, the whole country is catching a fever and what's the result? Aerial warfare. <laughs> but, Pasquale, I'm going to read the way they got a television with the no areas. That's even the worst. It starts the underground movements. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Luigi, forget this a television idea. Besides, uh, where are you going to get the money to pay for a television set? Well, uh, well, I'm going to figure that uh, I would have lend the money from my best friend. Schultz? No. Horowitz? No, you ain't even a warman. Olsen? Now you're getting a call. And so's your chance of getting the money from a maid. <laughs> but please, please, Pasquale, I'm going to pay you back. A television set is going to bring in a customer. Oh, stop. What do you think? I'm a... Uh, I'm a... Uh, hmm, wait. Uh, maybe I wouldn't be willing to lend you money for this a television set. Oh, you would? Sure, little cabbage head. <laughs> you know it's nothing I wouldn't do for you. Only condition is, uh, for the money I'm going to lend you, is it got to be a little interest. Well, uh, interest. Well, of course, Pasquale, that's the business. I'm going to give you interest. No, Luigi, you don't give interest, you take. I'm going to take interest out of my money? No, you take interest out of my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> Pasquale had no interest. She's a whole bank. <laughs> Luigi, roses are not the fat. Just to happen, she's a weight 250 pounds. That's a normal for a girl of her weight. <laughs> Pasquale, that's not the reason. The reason I'm a donor want to get the married is because... Uh, what is it? Because I'm a donor lover. That's a poor excuse. You get married, live it together 40, 50 years, you maybe you get used to it. <laughs> well, what I suppose it is a past the 40, 50 years, and I'm still not the used to it. Then I take her back. <laughs> no, no, that's no good, Pasquale. By that time, you might have changed your mind, and I'm going to be stuck with her. <laughs> All right, you stubborn ox. There's no roses and no television set. There's no business for you. Well, that's so what do you think of Pasquale? Right now, I'm going to my next school of class, and maybe one of my friends, are they going to lend me the money? Oh, those are big business, man. Schultz, Horowitz, Olsen. <laughs> they ain't got a one or lead dime in between them. <laughs> Luigi, I see bad things for you. Your business is to go from a worse to terrible. Soon you're going to go broke, and before you know it, you're going to be reading the want ads. All right, Sir Pasquale. I'm not too proud to read the want ads. In Italy? All right, class. Quiet, please, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Howard? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, do you mean you're going to be absent tomorrow? Why? Well, believe me, Miss Spalding, it ain't because you're giving us a test tomorrow. But you see, my grandmother has got 107 degrees fever. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Schultz. Certainly you can stay home tomorrow. Oh, and incidentally, I'm not giving that test tomorrow. Oh, then I'll come. Ain't penicillin wonderful? <laughs> uh, all right, quiet.
that class. Now, our lesson for today... Mr. Basco, do you have your hand raised? Well, yes, sir, Miss Spalding. Hey, you think if I was to put a television or set in my hand and think a shop a window is uh, going to bring in some customers? Hey, Luigi, that's a good idea. Since my brother-in-law put a television set in his window, his business increased 300%. That's so wonderful. Uh, what the kind of stories you brother got? A television store. <laughs> ah, Luigi, you should think twice before you put in a television set in your place. Last year, if you remember, I put in one in my delicatessen store, but it didn't work out. Well, why not, the Schultz? Well, after a heavy meal in my delicatessen, to watch Cassidy hop along ain't so good for the system. <laughs> Everybody went around hollering, Hi ho, heartburn! <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, don't, don't you listen to Schultz. I just bought me a yin dandy television set, and oh, you should see my family now. All night long, we, we just have our eyes glued to that set. Himmel, that would give even Milton Burl a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I think that television might stimulate your business. And also, besides attracting customers, you could enjoy the set yourself. What's to enjoy? I come home after a hard day's work. I open up the door, everything is pitch black. I say, hello, everybody, it's Papa. They say, keep quiet, the outlaws are robbing the bank. <laughs> Say yes, the where's my supper? She says it went that way. <laughs> well, uh, well, this television is a still a sound like a good idea to me. But, uh, hey, by the way, how much does it cost a set? Well, Luigi, you can get you a good set for about uh, two, three hundred dollars. And don't forget a slight charge for installation. That's another hundred dollars. <laughs> Luigi, it all depends on what size screen you want. There's a 7, a 12, a 16-inch screen. How much money have you got? Ten dollars. <laughs> For that, you'll get a 2-inch screen with a magnifying glass. <laughs> ah, smile, Luigi. I was only joking. These days, you could walk into any store and buy yourself a Z on payment. Yes, that's true, Mr. Basco. Many stores require only a small down payment. But uh, for $10? That far down they don't go. <laughs> no, smile, Luigi. I am going to lend you the money for the first payment. I should see you wonderful. Oh, oh, stop, Luigi. <laughs> you are turning my head. And I don't look so good, profile. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe the television set will change your luck with your business. Do you think it's so, Schultz? Sure. And what if your business don't pick up? What if you don't make one red penny in the next few months? What is the worst that can happen? They can take back the television set, that's all. <laughs> yeah, but a short so then you're going to lose your $50 down a payment. Himmel, Luigi, maybe we should first try a little midget radio in the window. <laughs> oh, but I should see you in a city. No, of course not. Smile, Luigi. Be happy like me. Always love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Hello, so, Mamma Mia, Schultz is loaning me fifty dollars for a television set, which I'm going to use to bring customers into my antique shop. Right now, I'm uh, sitting here looking on the newspapers uh, trying to figure out uh, what the television I'm sure to buy. Hey, Luigi. Oh, hello, Pasquale. Luigi, I was uh, just uh, thinking things over. Why you want to fool around with all these old antiques with this uh, Betsy Ross uh, bed in a window? You marry my daughter, Rosa, I'm going to put you in the biggest antique business in America. That's uh, nice, uh, but uh, what's the other, Pasquale? Use the cars. 
That's the one it is. That's the biggest antique of business in America. Use the car. Yeah, I know, but it thanks to Pasquale. Answer is still a no. Luigi, don't talk so fast. You got no ideas at all of what a head that my roses got. Are you so right, the Pasquale? Roses have got the no ideas in her head at all. <laughs> it's a funny thing. When I'm saying it, it's to come out of different. <laughs> Luigi, don't condemn the horse before the barn is a lot. Hey, here comes a Rosa now. You talk to her yourself. Hello, Papa. Just to tell him, Luigi, what good ideas you got in your head to improve his business. Go ahead and tell him. Luigi, you know that Betsy Ross bed you got? Yeah. Well, why don't you sell it back to Betsy? Oh, you big stupid you. Betsy Ross. Don't you know she's a move to Philadelphia? <laughs> Pasquale, you want to mix it up? What? Didn't you know Best C. Ross is a died? She did? Oh, Luigi, when is the funeral? <laughs> I'm going to want to talk about it. Why, Rosa? Don't you see Luigi's all broken up about it? I'm sorry about a Betsy Ross to Luigi. But I didn't know. I was just so busy this morning, I'm going to have a chance to read the papers. <laughs> well, Pasquale, thank you, Ona Rosa, for your offer to help. But if you don't mind, I'm going to downtown tonight now to buy television a set. Schultz is loaning me $50 for down a payment. Oh, that delicatessen man. Oh, it was a stick in his nose into my business. All right, Luigi, go. Buy your television a set. But I'm your landlord, and I'm ordering you to put your aerial in the cellar. You know what's going to happen? What? All of your pictures, they're going to come out upside down. <laughs> huh. That looks like a big television store. Sign is a say... Okay, television store, one to turn it down. One to turn it down? Oh, I guess the store must have been in a basement. <laughs> well, I'm going to go in. How do you do, sir? Oh, how do you do? Would you like to see something in a television set? Yeah, pictures. <laughs> of course. Of course. Now, there's quite a difference in prices. What price range did you have in mind? Huh? I said, what price range did you have in mind? I'm going to want to arrange. I'm on a television set. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> About this set here. This the one here? That's right. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, I should say it is. It has a 19-inch screen, 27 tubes, the clearest picture on the market. And besides, it also has a liquor cabinet. Liquor cabinet? Yes. Mamma mia, I'm heard about a saloon that's got a television set. It's the first time I've seen a television set that's got a saloon. Well, the price is only $700. Do you want it? No, thanks. I'm going to drink. <laughs> well, sir, we, we would accept a trade-in allowance on your old radio. Do you have one? Yeah, sure. I'm going to get a midget radio. Well, that would hardly be enough to... <laughs> But uh, please, please, it's a uh, very good. It's to uh, get a short to wave and everything. Oh, oh, well, perhaps it's a special job. Do you have an antenna? Huh? <laughs> I said, do you have an antenna? Ant, antenna. No, no, but uh, I'm a got Uncle Pietro. <laughs> Uh, I'm a lot. Very well, I'll, I'll 
show you a cheaper set. Very large screen, very easy on the eyes, only $350. That's a too much. I see. Well, how about this one? $250, a smaller size screen, not, not quite as easy to look at. Please, uh, maybe you got a something for $100 if I'm willing to strain my eyes a little bit. <laughs> Sir, the smallest set we have is this 10-inch, but it's very good and it's adapted for color. You mean, uh, you mean does it come with the crayons? Is it? Oh, I had a feeling you'd say that. Look, Me my too. friend, this set costs $197. Do you want it? All right, but I'm going to like to pay out and I'm, I'm going to get a $50 to pay with you. Well, that's fine. Now we can make the transaction. Fifty dollars down would leave an unpaid balance of a hundred and forty-seven dollars. Of course, there'll be a little extra charge for putting the set in and the tax. Oh, no, please. Please, if you don't mind, uh, when the man is uh, put in a set, uh, please, uh, no tax. That's the scratch up of the furniture. Scratch up. <laughs> Sir, you don't understand. This is the city sales tax. Now, about paying off the balance, how much time would you like? Well, uh, how much time can you spare? Well, <laughs> we try to please our customers, select your own terms. All right, uh, how's about uh, ten years? <laughs> ten years? Why don't you say a hundred years? All right, a hundred years. <laughs> what? And thank you very much. I never thought you were going to give me so much time to pay. Hey, Joe. Joe, tell me, what do you find now? He's got about a dozen people in the store looking at television sets. Ah, they buying any antiques? I didn't see any sales, but they were interested. So, Luigi thinks he's going to be a richer business man without me, eh? Mm. I show him. I'm going to knock a John D. out of his Rockefeller. <laughs> Joe, listen. Uh, how would you like to make a fast of five bucks? What's the deal? Uh, just to round up some of the boys in the pool room, see? Uh, go into Luigi's store, watch the television a little, and then start a big fight. Okay? You got a deal. All right. Hey, you do anything for your daughter, Rosa, huh? Has it got the nothing to do with a Rosa? Rosa could have married Luigi at a time. Then why don't she? Because she's a proud. She won't marry anybody unless they say yes at first. What do you want? Come on to the store. Maybe you like to buy one of these antiques? I don't want none of passive pretzels. All right. Uh, yeah, fine, Jane. This is pretzels and milk. That's all I'm got in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's that square. <laughs> all he had in the refrigerator. Hey, sit down, me here. Is your father a glazier? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, stop praising the salami sandwiches we sent you for. Oh, well, uh... Well, uh, Pasquale is uh, not giving me any credit. Uh, uh, um, um, but uh, maybe you like to buy some antique. Here's a genuine statue of Apollo Revere's a horse. A horse? Yeah. You interested? Yeah. With two dollars on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> please, 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 everybody. I'm going to want to stop you from the television, but I'm going to like it very much if you look on antiques a little. Maybe you're going to buy, huh? Hey, listen to Fine Tooth. He's trying to make a speech. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, look, here's something I think you like. A beautiful painting, a famous American. Wild Bill Hickok. I bring it over here. I'll give it a punch. Punch? Yeah, I want to give Hickok a belt. <laughs> So many laughs since that midget McCarthy fell off the bull thing. <laughs> oh, no, please, uh, please, everybody. There he goes. He's got a shoulder on the mat. Uh, one, two, three. And the winner is the Baron. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this telecast has been brought to you by the Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh, it's a fake. What do you mean a fake? He won it fair and square. Oh, are you calling me a liar? Yeah. How would you like a punch in the nose? Please, 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 please,
take it. Pasquale. Well, well, Luigi, how's the television, the king, eh? Now, please, Pasquale, don't make a fun. I'm had enough for trouble. Yes, I heard all about it. Excitement, the riot, the fighting. Yeah, it looks like only one who's made a business from my television was at the drugstore. He's a sold iodine. It's a lucky thing for you, the cops, that didn't come and take away the set. Pasquale, I wouldn't care as long as they make the payments on it. <laughs> Look at the big American business, man. You couldn't sell a parachute to a fellow who just fell out of an airplane. <laughs> well, what's the use of Pasquale? I guess I'm never going to be big a business, man. That's a fate, to Luigi. Some people, they born with a talent to make uh -huh. money. Other people, they born with a luck. Uh -huh. you just the type that gets a born, that's all. <laughs> Now, you take me. Nobody's ever going to put anything over out of Pasquale. I'm what he called a real business man. I'm... Uh, hey, hey, look through your window. Hey, Pasquale, look. Look under the crowd outside of my store. Yes, hey, must be a hundred people watching your television. Hey, Pasquale, just to think how much your spaghetti business would improve if you was to own a television set like this. Yes, I think I'm going to buy one. Hey, Pasquale, Pasquale, you big businessman. I bet you're figuring out the how you're going to buy my set from me right now. Moving into your store, and those 100 customers, they're going to follow you right in. Luigi, that's a wonderful idea I'm just to have. Spot the cash, Pasquale. Two twenty-five for the set, plus $10 for the trouble. That's to make 225 All right, Luigi. Turn around while I roll it down on my stock. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred, a two hundred, a two thirty-five. You only say twenty-five, I'll give you extra ten. Here hey. you are, Louis. Well, thank you, thank you, Pasquale. Now I'm going in the store and I plug in the set. Huh? Plug in? Luigi, if the set ain't on an hour, what are all those people are looking at? Well, Pasquale... You know that a Betsy Ross bed I'm um, got in a window? Yes. Well, Rosa, she's uh, taking a nap in it. So, Mamma Mia, everything is a turn out to fine. Pasquale is a pay to Joe five dollars to start a fight in my store. How am I know? I'm a pay to Joe ten dollars to find out. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm a sold to my television set, and the biggest deal I'm a made was a with my Betsy Ross bet. Ross is like it so much as she's a made of Pasquale buy it. <laughs> So, Mama Mia, and every day, every way, I'm learning to be better American business, man. You love a son of Luigi Pasco, little immigrant. <laughs> Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Beer and Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. They present this program each week because they feel that millions of Americans like to listen to the adventures of Luigi just as millions enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. And the Wrigley people invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Shipp as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. <laughs> Friends, the Wrigley Company invites you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.